you have a term, it's called the comprehensive nutrient adequacy, the CNA. Mm-hmm. Um, I, is that, can you talk about that for a sec? Cause I mean, I, you spend a whole chapter just on that whole principle. Yes. And it includes, so we're talking here that even though we're trying to have an excellent nutri- nutrient exposure, if you're deficient in one or two substances, you could still impair, impair your health. Even if you're eating a lot of kale and strawberries and onions and mushrooms, you're eating super healthy, eating a lot of green vegetables. But what if you're deficient in one particular thing? Then it still could, like you're B12 deficient and you're still going to have problems with your brain or something, or your, your omega-3 index is exceptionally low. or your, you know. So it still pays to pay attentiveness to all the nutrients humans need. And I am even have the awareness that even on a plant-based diet, our exposure to certain nutrients may not be optimized. And that certain individuals, because of their genetic, genetics, may not absorb or convert those nutrients into the right amount for them, for their optimal health or brain size with aging. So I'm just paying a little more attention because my experience has been being a physician specializing in nutrition for almost 40 years um, and caring for the uh, a vegan community and a, v- a plant-based community that such as the American Natural Hygiene Society, who I told you earlier were some of my mentors like Dr. Shelton, Dr. Vetrano, Dr. Sidwa, Dr. Burton, Dr. all these doctors who I would go to these conferences when I was you know, 18, 19, 22, and they were in their 40s or 50s or 60s listening mm-hmm. to them speak as I became a medical doctor and they became elderly, a lot of them developed neurologic problems like dementia or Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. And so, and they be, and a lot of them came to me to do blood tests to evaluate them and to see what was the issues. And so, so it made me merit very um, more attentive to the fact that yes, if you're B12 deficient, if you're omega-3 deficient, if you're zinc deficient, what are these potential um, nuances on a plant-based diet that would not, what, what might need supplementation or might need augmentation to some people versus other people? And how do we measure those things? Yeah. So that's another thing that I've paid attention to because of my experience. And, and also the combination of clinical experience with the, with the science medical literature, of course, and documenting that there's a, a huge amount of evidence to suggest that it's important to pay attention to some of to these things to maximize human brain size and resistance against the, the you know, because we know Parkinson's, is caused primarily by chemical exposure. Mm. But the brain becomes more sensitive to these chemicals when your omega-3 index is excessively low. Mm. So that's so we're talking here about making sure you're adequate in all the needed nutrients. Uh, like for example, one of the major causes of Parkinson's disease that everybody should know about, that's so that's probably one of the major factors driving it, is commercially dry cleaning your clothing. Mm. That if you have your clothes, you know, I don't dress up anymore. I'm not going to work, but I'm not ever really dry cleaning your clothing. But if you do dry clean your clothing or you work in a dry cleaner, that's very dangerous because those chemicals are now a known promoter of Parkinson's disease, for example. Mm. And, you know, and people are also drinking, um, like going to like Starbucks and drinking hot liquids, hot coffee into cups, cardboard cups that are lined with plastic. Mm. And you have millions of particles of nanoparticles of plastic when you're drinking the coffee down from these commercial establishments in plastic lined cups. You mm. know, so there's a lot of things people, so part of this information is we want to compre- do all these little things to improve our health as well, because these little things could pay a, could be important. Yeah. I want to ask you about supplementation here in a sec, but first you mentioned the, the, the hot drinks and yeah. I was looking, I was looking at your Instagram channel and I think you and your daughter have a, have a, have a nice a nice podcast, a nice show. And you start talking about hot drinks. And if I, if I heard correctly, you're not a thought, not a a huge fan of hot drinks. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Because, um, if the drink is too hot, like steaming hot, a lot of people can, um, have repetitive micro burns to their oral mucosa and tongue, increasing risk of throat and tongue cancer from the complete, from the actual heat. And that could be hot soups, you know, and hot drinks as well, in hot teas, people burn them, their mouth and they get their mouth so they're not even, sometimes the chronic use of such hot beverages, they don't even know the burns are taking place because they've chronically burned themselves so much, they've indurated and damaged tissues in their oral mucosa and tongue. 
So yeah, think if you want to drink something warm, like a like a green tea, it should be like warm hot, not hot hot, not steaming hot. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've never、uh, liked beverages that are that are very hot. <laughs> Can't stand them.